In this video, we'll discuss the story occurring in England in 2011. 17-year-old Emily Longley was full of hope and had a bright future awaiting her, but unfortunately, all her plans collapsed. This case caused a great resonance, not only because of the death of a young woman, but also because of how events unfolded after her death. Emily Longley was born in England in 1994 to Mark and Caroline Longley. Two years later, her parents had another child, Emily's younger sister, Hannah. From early childhood, the girls were very close to each other. They lived in a loving and caring family. When Emily was nine and Hannah was seven, the family moved to New Zealand. Auckland became their new home. When Emily fell in with the wrong crowd after emigrating to New Zealand, her middle-class parents sent her back to the UK to start a new life with her grandparents. In 2010, Emily flew to England to study at Brockenhurst College. She wanted to get a business degree and dreamed of becoming a model. In England, she lived at her grandparents' house in Bournemouth. Bournemouth, adjacent to Poole in the west, is a town in the county of Dorset, a popular resort on the English Channel coast. When Emily moved to England, her sister Hannah was still at school, and her parents, Mark and Caroline, divorced but maintained a friendly relationship. Emily was a beautiful young woman who attracted much attention. One day, she met 20-year-old Elliot Turner. He made quite an impression on her. Gradually, their communication grew into a romantic relationship. In April 2011, Emily returned to New Zealand to visit her family, whom she had not seen for about six months. Her father met her at the airport. She ran up to him and hugged him tightly, saying she missed him very much. Emily had a very close relationship with her father, who loved her madly and missed her smile, laughter, and dirty jokes. The following day, the whole family went to Emily's favorite pizzeria. She told her parents that, apart from studying in college, she was engaged in modeling and made some incredible friends. She also mentioned the man she was dating, 20-year-old Elliot Turner. They had only been dating for a few months, and it seemed to her that she was too young for something serious. I think I'm going to end it when I go back, she said. Emily spent the next few weeks hanging out with friends and family. She had a wonderful time. No one suspected they would soon lose her. When Emily's flight started boarding, it was hard for her to say goodbye to her family. However, Emily promised she would be back in five months. She wanted to see the matches of the Rugby World Cup, which was to begin on September 9th. While texting with her father a few days later, Emily informed him about breaking up with Elliot, but she did not go into details. Elliot behaved strangely after seeing the photos of Emily that she posted on social networks while in New Zealand. There were guys in these photos, and Elliot was very jealous. The son of a wealthy jeweler, Elliot Turner, was 20 years old, and his life seemed carefree. Turner was well known in the local bar and club scene in the Bournemouth and Poole areas and was part of a gang of wealthy young men called The Firm. Called by his friends All Talk Turner because of his boasting, he met Emily in December 2010. The couple enjoyed the high life at the resort and often had fun until late at night, but Turner, who had a history of obsession with women, soon showed signs of jealousy. As a result, their relationship quickly escalated into violent arguments. Some people described him as a person displaying a threatening, aggressive, violent, controlling, and possessive nature. In January 2008, when he was 16, he received a harassment warning letter from the police telling him not to contact his ex-girlfriend after he bombarded her with text messages and emails because she broke up with him. Turner loved being at the center of attention. He didn't need to work for a living. His parents gave him everything he needed. Elliot skillfully manipulated people, including his parents. His life was all about parties, women, alcohol, and illegal substances. He considered himself a man who can do anything he wants. Elliot carried a hammer with him in case anyone tried to contradict him. His friends believed that Turner fancied himself a gangster and wanted to become the one everyone turned to for help. He could come to the bar and buy everyone a drink. Elliot bragged about driving a new Mini Cooper 
but it was a gift from his grandmother. He tried to maintain his bad boy image with a series of supposedly streetwise messages on social networking sites where he often referred to himself as Scarface or God. He didn't lack female attention, but when he met Emily, he became very attached to her. She complimented his image of a successful person, which he worked hard to create. As their relationship developed, Turner started showing his controlling behavior more and more often. He even threatened Emily that he would take her life. In an emotional plea to Turner, Emily wrote a note to him a few months before her death saying, one, I love you. Two, don't say you'll kill me. Three, stop talking about your ex-girlfriends. Four, stop being so constantly aggressive. Be more cool, cause that is so much more hot and you make me scared cause you're so intimidating. When Turner began to show his true face, and when his controlling behavior started to go beyond all reasonable limits, Emily realized that he was not the person she wanted to be with. However, people like Turner don't understand rejection. On the evening of May 6, 2011, Emily was with friends in one of the entertainment venues. Surveillance cameras captured how she came to a nightclub with her friends. That evening, Turner read her Facebook messages and discovered that Emily was dating another man. It pissed him off. He came to the club and started arguing with Emily. This whole story ended with the girl throwing her drink in his face. Turner verbally abused her and threatened her with violence. He didn't like Emily's outfit. He thought it was too revealing. He dismissed the fact that Emily had broken up with him. The man wasn't going to let her go. Elliot ruined her evening so she decided to leave. Yet, her ex-boyfriend followed her. His friends heard him say, I will kill her. I will go to prison for it and still be a millionaire. I would do 10 years. It wouldn't bother me. Turner caught up with Emily, somehow persuading her to go to his house. He said he wanted to talk in a more relaxed atmosphere. Elliot Turner lived with his parents. Perhaps that's why Emily went with him. Maybe she thought he would behave more calmly in the presence of his parents. Neighbors saw them go inside the house. The following morning, Anita Turner, Elliot's mother, called the emergency service, saying Emily was not waking up. Just tell me what's happened there. They read the call. What it is, uh, my, my uh, son's friend is saying he does. Uh, this morning, I tried to, to wake both of them up, but the girl didn't wake up. We tried to wake her up. I don't know what it is. I need you to pull back the duvet for me and just look to see if you can see any signs of breathing. Uh, um, I tried to hold the pulse. No, I need you to put your, put, your, put your face next to her mouth. Can you feel any breath? Can you see her chest going up and down? No. Nothing. What colour is she? Um... What colour is she? Yeah, what colour is she? Is she blue? Is she... is she red? Is she red? Look, my, uh, my husband is having a look now. Hang on. It was about 9 a.m. Before the arrival of the ambulance, Anita listened to the operator's instructions on how to help Emily. Unfortunately, when the ambulance arrived, the only thing they could do was to state the death of Emily Longley. Anita was an Indonesian citizen who came to the UK to marry Lee Turner. When the couple had a son, they did not deny him anything, which was a big mistake. During her conversation with the emergency service operator, Anita's voice did not sound like the voice of a mother who had just found her son's girlfriend dead. She was too calm as if nothing unusual had happened. Thousands of miles from England, in New Zealand, Emily's father, Mark, woke up at two in the morning and saw a bunch of missed calls from his ex-wife, Caroline, and younger daughter, Hannah. There was also a voice message from Hannah, but Mark could barely make out what she was saying. Then he heard Caroline scream in the background and her words, Emily is dead. Mark refused to believe it. He called his mother in England. When she answered, his whole world fell apart. His mother was crying hysterically. Moments later, one of the police officers took her phone. I'm sorry to tell you that your daughter, Emily, is dead, he said. Mark couldn't believe it. After all, Emily was sitting on his couch and smiling just a week ago. Flying to the UK, 
The grief-stricken father still refused to believe that his daughter was dead, but unfortunately, it wasn't a dream. The loss of the eldest daughter was a heartbreaking challenge for Emily's parents. The police told them that Emily had died in her sleep. It didn't make any sense. She was young and healthy. The police collected some evidence, but it was unclear what happened to Emily. They had to wait for the autopsy results. Elliot Turner's parents, Anita and Lee, told investigators they had been home all night and had not heard anything suspicious. Elliot publicly mourned Emily by posting photos of them together on his Facebook page. The police had nothing bulletproof to refute the story of Turner and his parents that Emily mysteriously died in her sleep. During the investigation of any death, the main factor is to determine the cause of it. When investigators discover the cause of the victim's death, they understand what they are dealing with and how to conduct an investigation. While waiting for the autopsy results, the investigators found out that a few days before her death, Emily had posted something strange on her Facebook page. I have a stalker, she added. Someone just called me and I was like, who's this? And they were like, you don't know me, but I know everything about you. And I was like, how did you get my number? And he was like, it'll tell you when I see you and kept asking me out. So I hung up and they won't stop calling, Emily wrote on Thursday, May 5th. At the same time, the police managed to find out that before her death, Emily quarreled with Elliot Turner in front of other nightclub guests. After interviewing Turner's friends, investigators learned that he tried to control Emily's every move, that he found out about her meeting with another man, and most importantly, that Elliot threatened to take her life many times. But his friends did not attach any importance to this believing that these were just words with which Turner strengthened his image of a gangster. The autopsy did not give an exact cause of Emily's death. However, experts mentioned it could be strangulation, and one of them said, the physical findings are entirely consistent with pressure being applied to the neck. Investigators believed that one of the Turner family members could be involved in Emily's death, so they decided to install listening devices in their house. The police were hoping to find out if they were hiding anything, and they were right to do that. Getting the right to destroy it. Hmm? Getting the right to destroy it. Yeah. As we perverted the course of justice, we've destroyed vital evidence in this case. Getting the right. Yeah. Yeah, Mum, but I focus the conversation because it looks. You look so guilty. You look so guilty by ringing the father. No, I didn't. But, yeah, but mom, mom, please, from a policeman's point of view, it's so so obvious. She, that, that girl is, what do you mean? That, that girl is ruining my life. Yeah, she, she is ruining my life. She did ruin your life. You would have known she was freezing. She was freezing, mom. You can't be, you gotta think, 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 think. Brain, brain, brain. Just thought she was, you know. I don't know, I just thought she was, I thought she was just knacking. She was really tired, this has happened before when I can't get her out of bed. Hence, hence officer, I made a cup of tea. First, because I thought, I thought she was okay. Mum, that's fine, it's, it's so believable. It's burning me inside. Every second of my day it's burning. But I know something that they don't know. It's burning me, eating me up. I just get grabbed up and I grabbed it as hard as I could in my life. They heard Elliot instructing his mother on how to behave with the police and what she needed to say. His father, Lee Turner, seemed to be the only person who understood what he was doing was wrong, but eventually he submitted to the will of his son and wife. While listening to the recordings, investigators also heard what happened to Emily Longley. Elliot Turner admitted that he caused her death. They arrested Elliot Turner a week after Emily's death. He, of course, denied his guilt. His lawyers tried to challenge the authenticity of those audio recordings. However, having studied all aspects of this case, the judge allowed the prosecution to use the recordings as evidence. Not knowing the police were listening, Elliot admitted that he felt angry every day and that no one had ever pissed him off as much as Emily. During the trial in May 2012, his lawyer stated that their client acted in self-defense. Elliot Turner said that the quarrel in his bedroom turned violent and he had to grab Emily by the neck. He said he didn't strangle her, 
he just found her dead in his bed the next morning. During the second day of the trial, Turner told the court that he was disgusted by his actions that night. Allegedly, after finding Emily dead, he wrote a letter to his mother saying how ashamed he was and that he was leaving for Spain. One can assume Elliot Turner was going to leave the country on the day of Emily's death, but changed his mind for some reason. When the police arrived at Turner's home after the 999 call, they saw packed bags. Elliot's passport was in his pocket. He admitted in court that he had threatened Emily and felt upset and deceived the night before her death after seeing false emails on her phone saying he had smashed her face into a table. When describing the fight they had before her death, he mentioned Emily started beating him with her hands and feet. He tried to calm her down before giving up and throwing her a 20-pound note for a cab. He said, She just ignored me at first. Then, five seconds later, she just went crazy. I had never seen Emily get to that point of rage. I didn't know what to do. She would not stop. I kept repeating myself, Stop it. Calm down. At that point, I grabbed her by the neck using my right hand. Defense counsel Anthony Dunn asked, Why did you do that? Turner replied, To stop her going nuts. I did not know what to do. My right hand made contact with her neck. When the defense counsel asked how hard he grabbed her, Turner replied, I would not say very hard, but it was quite hard. I grabbed her and pushed her down onto the bed. I pressed down on her neck when she was in the lying down position. He said he held her there for five or six seconds then let go and stormed out of the room. When asked if he intended to kill Emily, Turner replied, No. He said he thought Emily had gone to sleep. Allegedly, he realized Emily was dead only when she did not wake up the following morning. In an interview with the Herald newspaper, Emily's father, Mark, spoke about how hard it was for him to lose his daughter. Here is the thing about death. It sucks. It doesn't matter if it is your child, your partner, or your 99-year-old grandmother. It sucks. That a person is there one day and not the next, well, it is not something we can deal with easily. All anniversaries are hard. Birthdays are hard. Christmas is hard. Easter is also tough because it was the last time I really spent time with her, Mark Longley said. He said the heaviest part was that he would never see the woman she could have become. I miss seeing the life she was denied unfold. We had a brief glimpse of the woman she was becoming, and I was so proud of her. I am her father, and of course am biased, but the world really was a better place with her in it. It was certainly a lot more fun. At the trial, they portrayed Elliot Turner as a spoiled, wealthy kid whose parents wanted to help him escape punishment. The court heard he was given the run of the family's home in the affluent Queen's Park area of Bournemouth, where he would hold parties for his middle-class friends. Described as wild by his father, Lee, he was given his own living space in the converted garage of his parents' house so he could come and go without disturbing them. It was in his room, which had its own mini-bar, that he strangled Emily on his bed. The police examined the computers seized from Turner's and found the following search queries. Death by strangulation and how to avoid punishment for a crime. The main motive of the crime was jealousy. The court heard testimony from Luke Ashford, who spent the night with Emily. As already mentioned, Elliot Turner found out about it. Even while in custody, Turner boasted that the jury would believe his twisted story that Emily had attacked him and he had acted in self-defense when he strangled her in a fit of jealousy. In letters from his prison cell to his friends, he said he would soon drive a new Range Rover and move to Spain. He planned to sell the rights to his story and live a fashionable life. However, the jury quickly shattered his illusions when they found him guilty. On May 22, 2012, the court sentenced Elliot Turner to life in prison with a minimum term of 16 years. Announcing the verdict, Mrs. Justice Dobbs described Turner as a man of striking arrogance. She said, Emily was a lovely, kind, fun-loving girl who brought a ray of sunshine to those she touched. That light has been extinguished suddenly and needlessly by you. You did not love her, she was just a trophy. The relationship, if it can be called that, was all about you. It was about control. 
control you carried out using aggression and threats. You can put away thoughts of champagne, Bentleys, and girls, and concentrate on the reason you are serving a life sentence. Mrs. Justice Dobbs also sentenced Turner to nine months to run concurrently for perverting the course of justice. But Elliot Turner wasn't the only person on trial. His parents, Anita and Lee, whom Turner used for cash to fund his lavish partying, loved their son so much they tried to cover his crime. Lee destroyed Turner's confession letter, and Anita took the jacket from the bedroom where the letter allegedly was. His mother even postponed calling an ambulance so her son could cover his tracks and let the family come up with a convincing story for the police. When asked why she did not call an ambulance, Anita Turner replied that she did not believe Emily was dead. Under cross-examination, they asked her if she thought Emily had ruined her son's life. After a pause of six seconds, she replied, No. In the recording, Lee asked Anita whether they had done the right thing. We've done the right thing, Anita replied. Both 51-year-old Anita Turner and 54-year-old Lee Turner were found guilty of perverting the course of justice and sentenced to 27 months in prison. Mrs. Justice Linda Dobbs said, The two of you chose to fight the case showing little remorse. Mr. Turner, you claimed you didn't know the contents of the letter when you destroyed it. But the fact it was burning on your conscience is quite evident from your anguished tone of voice on the tape. Released in 2013 after serving half of their sentence, they still live in the house where Emily Longley died. Emily's dad, Mark, broke down as he spoke about the verdicts after the case. Supported by former wife Caroline and daughter Hannah, he said, what we have heard over these five weeks has shocked us and disgusted us. That a man so evil like Turner could treat a gentle and loving girl like Emily so violently is beyond belief. We are so proud of the fact that she had come halfway around the world to cause a better life for herself. This is a life Turner decided to end. Mark said there was a lot of talk about Turner's boasting and that no one had taken his threat seriously until it was too late. He added, even his mother did not take him seriously when he texted her to tell her he was going to break Emily's neck. Perhaps if someone had taken his threat seriously, Emily might be with us today. I hope Turner suffers every day in prison for what he has done. In October 2020, the press reported that Elliot Turner's cellmates had beaten him in prison. It happened after he hung up photos of Emily in his cell and boasted of receiving letters from female fans. Some of his cellmates attacked him after he said he would soon return to his life full of champagne, Bentleys, and birds. In five years, Turner will have the right to apply for early release from prison. One can only hope that common sense will prevail and that the parole board will make the right decision regarding a person who still has no remorse for his actions.